Hey, today I'm going to cover the Chemical Agent Warbond. We'll go over the newest stratagems together, see how effective the gas is against different types of enemies, and talk about the new utility and armor passive. I'll give you my honest opinion on whether or not it's worth picking up, and show you some cool loadouts you can use with the Warbond. Please support the channel by tapping the like button below and subscribing. Let's start by looking at the stats for the first stratagem, which is going to be the AXTX-13 Guard Dog Dog Breath. The call in time is 9.75 seconds, uses are unlimited, and lastly the cooldown time here is 480 seconds, which is 8 minutes. Now let's compare that to the AXAR-23, which is the same, and that's 480 seconds, and that's the same amount of time you have to wait for the Guard Dog Rover as well. The Dog Breath isn't that great when it comes to fighting the Terminids, it takes a while to defeat a larger group of them. However, the caustic gas is amazing if you want to distract and confuse the enemies. This basically opens up an opportunity to destroy them or shoot them with a crossbow or whichever weapon you prefer. It's not that effective against brute commanders or hive guards, and it's alright against smaller terminate bugs. But really, the guard dog is great just for confusing the terminates, giving you the chance to shoot them while they're dazed. On the other hand, if you're fighting against the automatons, I think this is where you're going to see the stratagems benefit you the most. First off, it does an excellent job in taking out smaller bots like the commissioners. It's not too bad with the striders either. And if you're fighting against a hulk, it does an exceptional job in terms of damage. And of course, it will daze the hulk as well. It doesn't take too long to defeat one of them, but I think it's best to throw a thermite grenade at the hulk or use an anti-tank mine or any sort of anti-tank weapon. And that's really your best option. I feel like that's where you'll benefit the most with this. The damage in general, on the other hand, isn't bad at all. I say not bad because it progressively inflicts more damage the longer the caustic gas is applied. If you were expecting this to be like the flamethrower where it applies the damage immediately, then think again. As I mentioned a moment ago, it inflicts poison over time, affecting both bots and bugs, instead of causing immediate damage like the flamethrower would. This applies to both the TX-41 Sterilizer Stratagem as well as the Gas Grenade. The second and final stratagem in the Chemical Agent Warbond is the TX-41 Sterilizer. The call in time for this stratagem is 4.75 seconds and it has unlimited uses with a cooldown of 480 seconds, similar to the Dog Breath. I really like the description of this weapon because it says atomizes caustic chemicals into a fine mist that liquefies sensitive electronics and tissues blinds and slows most enemies. Now that's awesome because obviously it's telling you that it's effective against the terminates and the automatons, but mostly it's effective against the automatons. So yeah, basically this toxic gas effect is similar to the uh, orbital gas strike, gas grenade, dog breath, pretty much the toxic gas in general will cause confusion and all that. When you pull the trigger to release the gas and it hits the bug or the bot, it confuses them just as the orbital gas strike does, if you use it on a Brood Commander, it's the same with the Guard Dog, it's not that effective. And I even tried it on a Charger, and it is practically useless. If you use both the Sterilizer and the Dog Breath, it's not too bad at all. It can actually take out a Charger, however, even if that's the case, I don't recommend using this weapon against Chargers, unless your plan is to confuse them and then throw a Thermite Grenade, or really whichever weapon you would like to use. The Automatons are very weak to the TX-41 Sterilizer, especially if you combine this with the Dog Breath. Yep, by itself, it also does an excellent job in taking out smaller bots to medium and larger ones like the Hulks. There's actually a fun chemical-themed loadout for these stratagems. I had a blast using the Orbital Gas Strike, Dog Breath, Sterilizer, and the 500 kg Bomb. Not only that, but I also have the G4 Gas Grenade equipped, along with the new Advanced Filtration Armor Passive, of course. For weapon choices, you can't go wrong with the Torture, at least that's what I went with. Feel free to experiment, maybe the crossbow would be great as well. In the end, for me, it was a fun loadout to try that's different, and it might just cater to your type of playstyle. We're not going to stop right there because we do have to talk about the secondary. The stats for the Stim Pistol are as follows. It deals zero damage, which makes sense, right? You have a total of 26 Stims at your disposal, the recoil is 23, and the fire rate is exactly 70. To give you a comparison, the fire rate is slightly higher than the crossbow, which has a fire rate of 50. So what are my thoughts about it? My thoughts on it so far that I really enjoyed the Stim Pistol a lot, especially in some of those critical moments at the end of a mission. I could heal my teammates at the end of a search and destroy mission, with the destroyer gone of course, and it was actually great on the eradicate mission as well, and it became such a valuable tool 
that can literally keep your team alive when things get a little bit too crazy. Now, I couldn't heal myself with it. I tried shooting myself in the leg, and it just wouldn't work. Also, since we're on the topic of the stim pistol, if you have ever wanted to create a medical type loadout, you can certainly do that now. I recommend not only equipping the stim pistol, but also the supply backpack strategy in for stims and ammo. You can use this to supply teammates, and yourself of course. Equip the experimental infusion as well, which will give everyone in the lobby increased speed and damage reduction. Lastly, don't forget to equip the armor of your choice that has a med kit passive, so you have, you know, some extra stims on hand. Last but not least, the utility in the newest war bond is the G4 gas grenade. The stats are as follows. The damage is only 3, which I believe is because it inflicts a total of 3 damage every second or every so seconds, if I'm correct on that. The penetration is 6, the outer radius is 7, and the fuse time is 2.9 seconds. If we were to compare the fuse time to the incendiary grenade and the thermite grenade, they're both the same. The radius is short by 1 compared to those grenades, and actually has the lowest damage and radius on the list when compared to all the other grenades. However, again, the damage is low, most likely because it's inflicting damage over time, like the stratagems. Moving forward, we've discussed the stratagems, secondary, and the gas grenade, but what about the brand new advanced filtration passive on the armors? We've got a total of 80% gas resistance. I believe many of you already know about that, so how does it hold up against the gas on the field? If you find yourself in a huge gas cloud like the orbital gas strike, it's pretty impressive. You can resist a significant amount of damage thanks to the 80% gas resistance. The armors are also incredible both stylistically and in terms of their stats. For instance, the AF-50 Noxious Ranger Light Armor has an armor rating of 50, which makes sense. Typically, these light armors have a decently low armor rating. The speed is 550 and the stamina regen is 125. The AF-50 stats are the same as the CE-74 Breaker, CW-4 Arctic Ranger, SC-37 Legionnaire, and there are a few other armors with similar stats. If you have enjoyed using those armors in the past, then most likely you'll have a great time with the AF-50. The last armor on the list is the AF-02 Hazmaster, and it's a medium type armor. I like this one as well for the design and stats, starting off with an armor rating of 100, speed at 500, and a stamina regen of 100. Almost all medium armors have the same exact stats, unless they have the extra padding passive, but other than that, there's not much of a difference between the different medium type armors, unlike how the light armors have varied stats for ratings, speed, and stamina regen. But to be honest, the one that I prefer the most out of these two choices has got to be the Hazmaster. It's a lot better in armor rating, speed's at 500, and the stamina regen is at 100 as well, so honestly, it's a lot better than the light armor. The reason why I say that because with the light armor, specifically the AF-50 Noxious Ranger light armor, it's not that great because I found myself dying quite often, but the stats are not bad if you typically want to run faster and have like better regen and all that stuff. If so, then that armor for you is going to be perfect. But for me, I like to survive a little bit more and that's what the Hazmaster provided for me. Because of that armor rating, the speed and whatnot, I found this armor to be quite useful. And yeah, I think that one's the best one out of the list. Now, should you pick up the latest Warbond? I think that depends on your playstyle. If you're not a big fan of inflicting damage over time, instead of applying damage immediately, as you can with some of the other stratagems, then this one might not be for you. On the other hand, if you love the concept of dealing damage over time, then you'll definitely enjoy this Warbond a lot. The cool thing about this Warbond, in my opinion, is it kind of provides you with two different loadouts. As I mentioned, you can build a toxic gas loadout or a chemical loadout. Not only that, but because of the stim pistol, you can actually create a medical loadout, which is also pretty fun. So with all that being said, my overall thoughts on it are that the newest Warbond weapons are great if you want to distract enemies and apply an okay amount of damage before swapping weapons to finish them off. If so, I think you'll have a great time with them if you like that idea. The damage output, like I mentioned, is okay because the gas from the sterilizer can confuse certain enemies without inflicting enough damage to finish them off, uh, specifically for the terminates anyways. The gas in general is excellent for when you need to quickly heal your teammates in between deploying gas if necessary, or if you need to finish them off, you can definitely finish off some of the enemies. Also, the gas grenades are fun to use and can be helpful at times as well. Plus, the armor passive resistance to gas is notably strong. The gas in general is useful for both the bugs and bots, however, I found it to be more effective against the automatons than the terminids. Now, I'm not saying it's completely useless against the terminids, but what I am saying is that it's way more effective against the automatons. 
And I like that because, to be honest, the last few war bonds felt like it was more intended for the Terminids instead of the Automatons, and this one felt like it was meant for the Automatons. So what is my answer here? Is it worth picking up or not? Well, it's worth picking up if you like the idea of confusing enemies and then swapping weapons to finish them off, but if you were thinking that these stratagems were going to apply damage instantly instead of over time, then I think you'll probably want to give this one a pass. But yeah, that's my honest opinion about it. You guys can definitely let me know how you feel about it, but I know for sure these weapons are not effective against the Terminids, but it can be if you need to just distract them and then finish them off with a different weapon. Anyways, this is the end of the video. There's no top three comments, but that will be featured in the next video, so make sure you comment down below and let me know how you feel about this. Also, if you guys would like to, join the Discord. You can follow me on Twitter, all that good stuff. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for, so much for watching the channel. If I can never speak properly, and I'll see you guys on the uh, next video.